at his feet behind him, weeping, began to wash his feet with her tears, wiped her, 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 her hair with all of her head, kissed his feet, anointed them with fragrant oil. Now, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would know what manner of woman this is who touches him. Now, right there, you already understand this Pharisee is looking at past and outward appearances, not someone who is, is, is seeking help. And, 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 and that's a person that operates just by rule and regulation and ritual. They don't find grace. And we need to be operating through grace. That's why we're saved by the grace of God. We'll never live up to every standard that the law gave in the old covenant. And that's why Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and life abundantly, praise the Lord, through the grace that it's been given to you. <clears throat> so in this, this Pharisee is thinking he's not saying it he's just thinking it while he's looking at this woman doing what she's doing with Jesus now you can imagine she's weeping on his feet she has long hair she's wiping his feet she's anointing his feet she's kissing his feet notice to what it says here and when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself saying, this man, if he was a prophet, you see, that's what rule and regulation does. It always wants to test the person, always wants to see what they're going to do on the outward appearance to, to prove if they're really who they say they are. That's why Jesus said this. And let me say this to every person watching also. He said, you will know them by your fruit. See, fruits don't speak fruits produce and everyone that takes of the fruit will understand this is good or this is bad you see so that's why Jesus wasn't involved in all of that he 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 he, he was being judged even at the table of invitation by the Pharisee if this man was a prophet then he would know the manner of woman is that's touching him for she is a sinner and Jesus answered and said to him Simon I have something to say to you. And he said, teacher, say it. Notice how he said, Rabboni, teacher, tell me. Tell me what you got to tell me. And this is what he said. There was a certain creditor who had two debts or debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other owed 50. And when they had nothing with which he to repay them with, he freely forgave them both. Now you tell me, Simon, therefore which of them will, will love him more? Simon answered and said, well, I suppose the one who, who he forgave more. And he said to him, you have judged rightly. And he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water so that my feet could be washed or cleaned. You see, it was a custom in those Jewish days for as you walked into the house, you would purify yourself, wash your hands, wash your face, take off your sandals, and wash your dirty feet. How many of you parents have, have ever asked your children, when they come inside your house, take off your muddy shoes outside? Or don't you walk on my carpet, you know, with those, those stained shoes? Absolutely. Well, that was the custom. But yet here, Nothing of that is taking place here. You gave me, you, he says here, to wash, no water wash my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. It was a custom in those days as they would greet each other, they would kiss each other on the cheeks, but yet Jesus had not received even a welcome notice in that house. So this woman is not kissing his cheeks, but kissing and kissing and kissing his feet. Look what he says here. He says, you gave me no kiss, but this woman 
has not what? Cease to kiss my feet since the time I came in. What does that mean? Jesus is still talking to Simon and she's still kissing his feet. Come on. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. It was a custom in those days as visitors would come or guests would come that the head of the house would anoint them with oil and seat them at the, at the, at the table in the direction where the pantry was that held all the oil. It was, it was signifying that this man of, uh, that's a guest is, 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 is trusted. This man is welcomed, but yet here Jesus is not even anointed by the head of the house. So she anoints his feet. You didn't anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. And those who sat at the table with him began to say to themselves, again, speaking in themselves, not to each other, who is this who even forgives sins? Then he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go and be in peace. You think about the life she lived, the burden she carried, the regrets, the shames, the, 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 the condemnation that she would receive due to her involvement in this type of sin that she was living. But yet she had the boldness. I'm praying that people, that the church will carry a boldness regardless of their past or what they've done they used to do when they know they've been washed by the blood come on somebody the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ I no longer have to look to my past to dig anything out I'm looking to my future and my future has been given to me because my past has been forgiven hallelujah glory to God and when my past is forgiven then I have a bright future in Jesus name 